All right, I'll call to order this uh, meeting of the Waitley Select Board. Um, I've got our agenda up here on one of these screens. There we go. Um, first item on our agenda are the meeting minutes to review and approve the meetings for October 25th, 2022. And I wonder if there are any comments on those. No comments. No comments. Okay. I would. Uh, I'd accept a motion then. I move to accept the meeting minutes from October 25th, 2022. Second. Okay, great. Um, all those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, great. Next item is, excuse me, vendor and payroll warrants. Um, are there any comments on those? No. None. Okay. Then no, that does not require a vote. Is there signed and gone? Okay. Um, then public comment. Now is the time we love to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. Uh, I see a few faces in the room there, uh, and I can't recognize who they are. I see three. Um, is anybody in the room there uh, want to say anything during public comment period? Okay, I'm not seeing any indication. And then uh, there's some folks on Zoom. Um, I see Tyler and uh, a man who is probably related to Karen Bukala. <laughs> George Bukala, I'm a water commissioner. Okay, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say in public comment, George? No, I didn't want to come in there and cough on you guys. Okay, hey, me too. Uh, Tyler, how about you? Do you have anything you want to say in the public comment? I don't, George. Stop. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Then I think public comment is is thoroughly taken care of. Um, we don't have any scheduled appointments, and we don't have anything new to discuss under COVID nineteen. So let's move on to old business. So old business. The first part, the first you know, letter A there, to discuss and vote a joint request for CLFRF monies from the town treasurer collector and water department to purchase billing software. So I suspect Brian could probably give a better explanation of this. Mm -hmm. I'm remembering it from one of the town meetings or from previous meetings talking about that. Just leave it. Yeah, I can, I can give a uh, quick recap and maybe Wayne can provide some details. It's, if you recall, the, the treasurer collector updated uh, the town's financial software um, from its um, original program point to VADAR. And I think one of the unintended consequences of that change was that the water department billing software was no longer compatible with, um, you know, the town's financial software. So I know that Wayne and, and Lynn have spent a good deal of time trying to figure out a solution to that. Um, as way of background, the treasurer collector does the, does the billing for uh, the water department. The water department pays as part of its overhead costs to the town from the enterprise fund for the treasury collector to do that. Um, so right now there's a it, there's a incompatibility with, with the software, and I don't think that uh, the water department is able to send out its bills at this point. Right, when, right, Wayne. Yeah. Um, so apparently there's um, a bridge that can be developed. <laughs> the two types of softwares. Um, but it uh, costs money for that to happen. I think their request is, is it still 16,900? Yeah. Um, from the, you know, that would be the cost to, my understanding is to purchase the software and isn't there some type of equipment that goes along with that? With the software? Yeah. Yeah, it's the actual, I don't know, I call it the handheld, uh, the, all the water accounts get loaded onto it's the actual thing you I take with me to go drive around and it reads the radio signals from everybody's house, reads the meters. So that's that's the current request would be to for, for to use CLFRF monies to um, you know, provide what's needed to. 
Yeah. Still. Okay, that's kind of what I remembered it as. Um, and <clears throat> sorry, what I good thing I have some water here. Um, and I thought at the time when we discussed it, it was not particularly controversial to do that. But uh, maybe um, Julie and Fred have some uh, something to say there. I've got no objections. I have no objections, as I often do. I have questions just for my own clarification. Um, is it a bridge between the two softwares, or is it purchasing the same software like, so that there's identical software of the town office and the water department? It's new software. So it's not necessarily a translator. It's, it's no, from what kind of software? Yeah, I'm no computer expert. All right. What, what I gather it is, it's new software and then the town runs Vader. Yeah, but the, the new town software is, is Vader. Yes. So this software can talk to Vader. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, second question, is there any concern about loss of data in transferring from one type of software to another? From what we've been told, no. Okay. Those well, are my two questions. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Stuff, right? I have no objection to it. for it either. Does that mean you are entertaining a motion? Joyce, you're muted Joyce, at the moment. You're muted. Joyce, you're muted. Sorry, I was I was uh, blowing my nose there. Didn't want you to hear that. Um, so uh, I would entertain a motion happily. Um, we use CLFRF money to pay for uh, appropriate sixteen thousand nine hundred dollars to pay for software billing software for the water department and printer collector. I'll second that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, are those in favor? Um, let's start with uh, Julie this time. Yes. Uh, Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay, very good. Um, the next item is to discuss providing a letter of support for the submission of an efficiency and regionalization grant to support South County Senior Center. Um, yes, that's been, uh, there's been a little stuff going on there with getting more information. Um, I don't know if you, would you like me to summarize, Brian, or would you like to? Um, if you want to. Oh, okay. Um, I'll start with the BOO meeting. The Board of Oversight meeting was uh, earlier this, no, last week. It was the November 2nd. Um, and it was, I was there uh, by Zoom that was held over in the new space in Sunderland. Um, and uh, we, at the meeting, we made it very clear that supporting this, I mean, that we, we really want to support the, the grant application and that the grant application is about feasibility and about a long-term study for, for a long-term solution for our seniors uh, and senior center. Um, and that was made really, really clear at the meeting. Um, what I did not have at the time was any inkling of like, what, what's your budget? And uh, so I, I, I had asked for some things and asked also about environmental remediation. So we got a little bit more information today and some of it actually came quite recently. I forwarded it to Brian, but it may not have gotten to Brian in time for him to even read it for this meeting. Um, they sent us uh, just you know some wording that they were going to use, which I thought was fine, but they I think they just sent the wrong budget document because it was a budget for doing repairs to a building, not really a budget for studying feasibility. So uh, today I emailed Casey and asked about that. I said, uh, yes, this wording is very clear. It's consistent with what we discussed at the Board of Oversight meeting. Um, and But the budget, it doesn't say anything about the cost of a feasibility study or a uh, cost of a of another, uh, you know, any, any other kind of long-term study. So she said, okay, all right, here, here's the new one. And Brian's got the new one up. Good, so you got that. 
So it's a, not a finished budget. Um, uh, they know that they need a structural analysis. Uh, they need some the sanctuary floor framing. There's, so there's some things they are actually knew about. Um, uh, procurement assistance, I assume that means they need to comply with procurement law and they need help doing it. Um, and then they've changed the name of something to long-term design planning for space utilization. Um, and so I'm still curious about that. I have another email that hasn't been sent yet to Casey to ask about that. Um, I sent a quick one before my next appointment came at work today, um, asking about um, those things that are shaded in yellow. Are those things where you're still seeking uh, some uh, estimates for the cost? And does the moisture remediation include mold remediation? Um, and uh, just now, and not yet forwarded to Brian, I have an email from Casey saying, um, uh, where is it? That's not, it's not in that box. Give me a minute to find the right box where it is. Okay, uh, so her reply was, the moisture remediation may include mold. We haven't completed an evaluation on that yet. Our first concern was asbestos, but this is a process. So uh, I think she's, she's saying, yeah, this, might, this is a draft. Um, so I suspect then we would probably want to ask that it's specifically say moisture and mold remediation in the basement. Um, I think they did, oh, they did do an, an asbestos environmental um, survey and that they sent us a copy of. So they've looked for asbestos, but they haven't um, looked at like what, I mean, the mold is really obvious that it's there. So it may not be, you need to send someone in to see if it's there or not, but uh, the remediation of the mold should be in there. And I think it could be in the moisture remediation in basement. The thing that concerns me about long-term design planning was some other wording that was in there. Um, that they won't be using, the, they used to use the word master plan because it can be confusing. Design planning for space utilization is more specific and recognizable across the public sector. My worry was that this isn't for like future needs of the senior center. I don't know, maybe Brian has a better perspective on that as to whether that's really something uh, that I should worry about uh, or not. But those are my concerns at the moment and I don't think they necessarily preclude sending uh, a letter like the one Brian drafted for us in support um, because I, I think they, they are being much more clear that this is about doing studies to see if this, can be done rather than just using it as uh, like whatever we want to do with it when it gets when it gets here or you know whatever other fears people may have had about how that money might be used. I hope some of that was coherent. I, I mean, my take is that is that there's generally two tasks. I, I don't know that they're well spelled out in the budget, but my understanding is that there's there's two tasks. One is one is the feasibility study, um, mm -hmm. which, I, which I which I'm guessing here. I'm guessing is the structural analysis of church roof and tower, structural inspection of Homer sanctuary floor framing, um, and yeah, all those things in yellow plus the one line below, right? Well, well, the ones in yellow make me think that those are. I, I don't know, but it makes me think that those are actual construction uh, construction projects. And, and what tips me off is chapter 149 is public building construction. Oh, uh, I didn't comments, know that. Comments there. Um, <coughs> procurement, system, procurement assistance, you wouldn't really need procure, procurement assist, um, assistance if you're just doing a feasibility study. Yeah. Um, well, that, okay, generously, could these things outlined in yellow be doing a feasibility study? 
How much will it take to make the building ADA compliant? How much will new flooring cost? How much will HVAC replacement cost? Like, could it be that these are, please, I mean, the, if the numbers were there, we could tell, you know, if it's $2,000, that's not getting you a new floor, but it might get you, uh, uh, you know, someone who can come in and structurally tell what's going to be needed to put in a new floor. You know, so to me, the the numbers being missing <laughs> is not helpful. Yeah, and uh, I, I share your confusion around a lot of this, Joyce. Um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of development, long term design planning for space for space utilization, I, I didn't have a problem with 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 using the term a long range master plan for senior services, because I thought that's what indeed it, it, what I think is needed. And that's sort of, what are the long range, um, you know, space and service needs that the South County Senior Center, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what residents of the three towns need over the, over the long term. So, but to me, that's not a, that's not a building specific plan. Right. That, that that's building off the uh, that's building off the the senior needs assessment that's been completed. To me, the next step is what I would call a space needs assessment, um, and that is looking at you know looking at the the needs identified in the survey. How does it how what does a facility look like? Yeah. Um, what does a new facility look like or a renovated facility look like that would meet the needs of the seniors? Yeah. Um, that's my opinion is what as to what's you know what should happen right. next um but there's a lot of i think yeah the what, terms and things like that that make it confusing yeah the um i'm noticing on, on under the the development where it says long term design plan for space utilization 25 to 50,000 grant funds and then the last column says by opm to assess best uses for building that what building are they talking about? Presumably it's the church. And OPM office of Prime OPM, Minister. <laughs> OPM stands for uh, owner's project uh manager. And that's required when uh a municipality engages in public construction that exceeds 1.5 million dollars. Um and so we'll 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 get we'll become very okay. familiar with that if, if and when the we do the highway garage project. Um, right, right, because that that, that doesn't but, really sound like a needs uh, like a, a figuring out long term planning for senior services in the three towns. I would say, based on my somewhat moderate previous experience that this sounds like planning for uh, construction within a very specific building. And do the three towns actually ever get together to discuss what we're doing or are we kind of working blind here passing documents back? Mm. Well, regarding the senior center, yeah, we have a board of oversight with one selectman from each what town. We just met with. And uh, who were not consulted on this. Yeah, I, I agree with you. This seems to presuppose that we're using that, that, that we're using that building, that building. which yeah. just as an aside is never actually mentioned either in the letter of support or on the spreadsheet what building it is that we're talking about mm -hmm. the, yeah the, the building. yeah there is um uh, nowhere on there does it say congregational church or an address or anything is it possible uh, is this from the town of deerfield is it possible to ask them to become very clear about what exactly they're asking for? Well, there's another document that's not in the window there. Um, uh, the, I'm looking, scrolling through it for the for the working part. Um, right, the grant would be used to conduct a feasibility study to determine a budget and schedule for building repairs, space redesign to accommodate various group sizes and uses including administrative work, HVAC, AC, accessibility and energy efficiency improvements. 
The study would allow the three towns to determine whether the building could serve as a senior center and the affordability of the necessary improvements. So that's, um, I think they, they have mentioned the building in question in the previous paragraph, the South Deerfield Congregation oh. Church. Okay. And they say, it sounds like, but it does, the spreadsheet seems to presuppose that that building is the one that's going to be used. Well, that's the one for the not feasibility. Just, not, just, yeah. not just uh, analyzed for fault, but that one way or another yeah. it's going to be used. Yeah. So, Joyce, at the, well, okay. at, the, at the Board of Oversight meeting that, that happened on the, the first. The first, right, sorry. What did the Board of Oversight vote to recommend or uh, recommend or, or, or support? Well, we wanted to support this grant, making it clear that it's for a feasibility study right. and for long-range planning for a senior mm -hmm. center. For the three towns. Um, the second part of their text is says the second part of the funding request is for funds to conduct a long-term design planning for regionalized senior services. So it's in the text even if it's not in the budget. Um, funds would be used to engage a design team to facilitate the planning process for long-range space and service needs. So that text very, very ambiguous as to whether they refer to a specific building or general needs. Right, because for the second part, it's not supposed to be specific. Right, that's supposed to no, be. But, but it, it it could be interpreted as specific as by someone who wanted to to <clears throat> apply to a specific building rather than a general study. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I agree, there. but. Um, because the, I think the sentence they put in, because I put my foot down and made myself into a real pain in the you know what at that meeting was, it says the study would allow the three towns to determine whether the building, referring to the Congo church, could serve as a senior center and the affordability of the necessary improvements. Okay. So I think because they stuck that in there that it's not a done deal that we would move into that building, we would be looking for, you know, what is the, um, you know, what does this feasibility study say first to determine whether it could or not, okay? Where, where is that text? I'm sorry, is that in uh, that's, I had forwarded it to Brian, but only like in the last hour or so. Um, I can share my screen. I've got it up here if you want. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, I might have to. Yeah. Yeah, I have to enable my screen share. Uh, who's host? Is that you, Amy? Me. Well, while that's happening, there's a there's the budget that we have before us, and what's what what the board of oversight voted to support. And I think in the way that the letter that I had suggested for the select board is that the board would support a feasibility study. Um, on a church building and support um, a long-term master, long master plan. Um, the budget that's presented yeah. to me, it's it's hard to see how how that how they yeah. how they fit. Um, but I guess the question for the board is, you know, in terms of the letter, do you you know would you support yeah the ability to study the church and the in the master planning for the you know for this for the senior services. Yeah. Is this the edited letter that you had sent that had red text? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So I put the part I think I just read out um, is in this part I highlighted on the screen. Is that big enough for people to see? I can make it a little bigger. Um, and I think I probably started reading from the place where it says the grant would be used. Um, and I'm going to scroll slowly upward a little bit. Um, this is in the context of this feasibility study is on the congregational church. So I feel like they have the wording consistent with what we would like to support here. I don't see that implemented in their budget. Agreed. Um, but they, I, I think they're really clear that their budget's not quite ready yet. 
Um, and uh, so I can, we can, I mean, I think we can voice more concerns. Um, I seem to be able to um, manage with Casey reasonably well. Uh, I'm just looking at the language here. It's still, even as it is very definite language, we want to use this building and we'll, you know, Yes, if you want to use it for something. Are, are necessary, not might be necessary or would be necessary. Uh, it seems like the other drafted this has presupposed that this building is going to be used come hell or high water. But not for the senior center. It, it may be the Deerfield uses it come hell or high water for things that they completely control. But I don't think this says that the building well, has no, it to says be we'd like to use this building as a central consolidated location for senior services. So that's oh, the it says that's they would like to. Sure, they would like to. But I, I think it's really clear that down from down here that the mm -hmm. three towns get to determine whether this can serve as a senior center. Okay, I, it's, it, this still yeah. seems very much steering in one direction of whoever drafted this letter really wants to use this building. I, and it's as opposed to looking at other options. Yeah, the looking went, at the looking at other options is in this part. I went Fred on possibly asking if they would be willing to change that sentence the town would like to use rather than get into something where we have to backpedal because the language was unclear and we went ahead on good faith to change to something such as the town is interested in finding out if this building is usable as. Because they'd like to find out if they can use it, even if they'd like to use it, they'd like to find out if they can. So let's not presuppose they can. Does that make sense? Um, and I would be more comfortable with that. Like, like uh, just eliminating that sentence? The town... Uh, yeah, I'd like I, to explore. Uh, uh, yeah, building. I would like to explore whether this building is po it's possible to use this building rather than the town would like to use this building. Okay. Wanting to use it, but... Give me so, some verbiage here. The town. The town would like to explore whether it is possible to use this building as a central consolidated location for senior services, and then take out the last. Or you, you're period. speaking faster than I can type. For <laughs> central consolidated senior services. Central consolidated senior services. Okay, but that. Um, Period. Yeah. And then As I'm not sure repairs one. and ADA upgrades are necessary before the building can repurposed and be repurposed. Again, it kind of presupposes that the building is in fact going to be used. And we're still in the discovering whether it is, whether we can use it phase. Yeah. I think, oh, that makes more sense. Uh, I think you're planning on using the building. Uh, yeah, they're planning to use the building, they would, and they may just have to raise a lot of money to do it. So I, I'm not sure that. Uh, and this is this is a this is Deerfield's grant application, so we could make suggestions to right do it, but we don't necessarily. So they're going to use the building, and they're saying, "See, I'm still right. catching up here," uh, yeah. and they're saying. Maybe it'll be the senior center, but otherwise we're just looking for money to. I, I think we can use the building. That's fair. Uh, the yeah. board of oversight gets to decide where the senior I center see. goes. So, although Deerfield, I think, will, will sees it as a realistic option for the right. South County Senior Center, the board of oversight voted to sort of pump the brakes a little bit and say, let's have a feasibility study done first to make sure it makes sense. To go in there, yeah. To open that build. So maybe, all right. I'm, I'm being bossy here. However, it's okay. Of its future use, repairs and ADF upgrades would be necessary before the building could be repurposed. Yeah, I um, think that's safe to say. 
you want me to say it again, Joyce? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I didn't catch. Go ahead. Uh, however, comma, regardless of its future use, comma, repairs and AD upgrades, ADA upgrades, the remainder of the sentence stays as it is. And this is where I'm really happy to have uh, it, it, its future use. What does Microsoft say I'm doing wrong here? I think it's saying you don't need a comma. But... <laughs> Okay. Hey, I, I'm fine with other people being the grammar police. I say you do. I feel like there should be a comma there. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> yeah, there you okay. go. And then I'm going to make this red so I remember that that's really going in up here. I think that says what they're, what we think they like. To say? Yeah. Well, we hope they don't say that. Yeah. And uh, what, I, uh, what I realized here on the second part anyway, was long-term design planning for regionalized senior services. So because it's specified in the text, I'm a little more uh, comfortable with they've just got that placeholder in the budget they're asking for 200k at most 50k would go towards the long-term planning i don't know if 50k is a big number or realistic number for a good long-term plan um but it might be what the, that might be that so it seems like their proportions are going to be like 150k for figuring out the feasibility for the building and 25%, like 50K for the long-term needs. Um, and I, but at the same time, I, um, I mean, the thing I'm nervous about is not seeing the budget. I don't know if we can sign a letter and just hold on to it till we see the budget. Um, when is that's the really sort of where the rubber hits the road yeah. with the proposal. Mm -hmm. Um, and a good proposal will have a budget that matches the verbiage, but in, to some extent, it's somebody else's baby, right? Somebody else is submitting it, so there's got to be a certain amount of trust. Uh, I think we've got it in the public record in several places, what we were supporting, yeah. and um, it. I don't know how well we can rely on that, but we can certainly and we certainly have that to point to. And the letter of support that we would send is fairly clear. Yes, yes, yeah. The the BOO also has a letter, which I made a few little changes to. Uh, Jennifer Remillard made a draft, and um, I think it's basically a good draft, and I would, um, I might be tweaking it um, myself, but um, but she was really clear about two parts and you know, what the two parts are for. <laughs> Did you want to see the potential changes that we put in there? Or we uh, privy to them? I can I, stop sharing my screen. I probably don't need that anymore. Okay. okay. So I um, this discussion so far and with the edits that Brian and or you had made to the letter of support, I'm comfortable with this. Yeah, yeah. I'm good with it. Yeah, I think that, that Brian, your, your draft letter was, was spot on. Um, and I would not have any trouble um, signing that it's really clear about what we support and what we don't support um yeah well i guess the question on the table is are we willing at this point to sign this letter of support 
Um, and if so, or do we want, I mean, can we realistically make any, um, we can make suggestions, of course, <laughs> but could we say we'd like to see your budget before we actually give you the letter? I mean, they asked for it first thing tomorrow morning. Um, <laughs> well, if they don't have the budget ready, then they're not going to be sending it in. I mean, we can send it in and like, even if it were hand carried over, it would take only 10 minutes. Yeah, so I, and in, in some senses, the question is strategic. Is it worth, is it worth that? Mm. I think it's pretty clear what what the board supports, yeah. and if the yeah. grant is different than what's in the narrative and in the budget, if the budget's different than what's in the narrative, and and what the Sunderland has a similar letter supporting those two items, and the Boo has a similar letter supporting those two items, so yeah. there seems to be consensus as to what the grant should contain. Unfortunately, Joyce, I think it's going to be your job as a person on the board there. Mm -hmm. to make sure this yeah. nothing happens without yeah well I'll give I will then after this meeting I'll respond to the most recent email from Casey and give her that feedback um and uh and ask her to please send us the budget first thing in the morning um and you know we can ask and see what happens I mean good neighbors will do that right so, and then we I, sign the letter and send it. On. Do we have? We do we sign it tonight and have it ready to go tonight? And then Joyce can maybe sign, drop an electronic signature on it, unless you're swinging by. Oh, uh, day is tomorrow. Um, yeah, if you leave it out there, maybe I will make a point of getting over there, the crack of, and um, putting a real signature on it. Assuming you support it, of course. Assuming I support it. <laughs> um, do we need a vote on this? I think it would be good, yeah. Okay. Well, as the as the boo member from our town, I will say I will um, uh, move that we sign the letter of support that Brian wrote up for us uh, for the efficiency and regionalization grant to support South County Senior Center. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. You have a little fist fight over there. Yeah, you've got to fight, yeah. Um, Great. Oh, then let's do a roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Great. Then the, le the next item under <laughs> old business is to review and vote to approve special town meeting warrant for November 29th, 2022. And that came in. Just, uh, oh, I feel like it was just a few minutes ago, but I know it was, um, <laughs> it was more than that. And yeah, this was the updated, updated one. Okay. No significant changes, just some editing changes. Mm, yeah. Um, but I can run through the articles if that would be helpful. Yeah, let's go through them real quickly to see that we recognize them. So the date we had selected was November 29th um, at 7.30 p.m. That would uh, follow a select board meeting, or it would require the, uh, a recess in the select board meeting, which could be continued after the special town meeting, which we have done in the past. Um, so, right, it's written as it would, the special town meeting would be at the Whitley Town offices, start at 7.30 p.m. The first article is requested by the uh, Community Preservation Committee, and it's an article uh, to see if the town will vote uh, to appropriate and transfer the sum of $38,000 um, of CPA funds for the um, historic restoration of the windows at the Congregational Church. Um, it is an eligible CPA use. Uh, there was discussions with uh, the, uh, between the CPC and town council to make sure that there was no constitutional issues um, that existed with, um, you know, the, the 
the appropriation of funds to a religious institution um, for uh, a secular purpose. And uh, town council didn't seem to think that there would be any, his opinion was that there was no um, issue there. Um, so that's the question that would go to the president. <coughs> Um, and obviously, anywhere okay. where written, recommended by the select board, this is a draft. Oh. If, if if you don't recommend it, then right. it just, wouldn't be on the warrant because I would take it off. Just so okay. you know, the copies of the draft that we got in our packets here, those aren't the updated ones. Are the old draft, the old yeah. version. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're working off of whatever's on the screen, not what's in our packets. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, Article 2. Any other questions on article one? Yeah, that's just the, the wind. <laughs> that's just the window thing that's been going on for a while. They were under warranty and then they're not under warranty, or or is this something else? The church windows, not the town hall windows. Church. Oh, duh. Okay. Thank you. Um, article two um, to vote, uh, to vote, raise an appropriate or transfer from available funds, the sum of uh, $1,391. To pay for additional operating expenses of the library, um, and this is a request a, a request from the library trustees. Yeah, this is one um, related to the the salary. They never gave an increase last year. Yeah, there was. I think there was an there was an omission from their budget for the uh, an increase to the library director's salary, um, and they're trying to they're requesting funds to to make it. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know if that gets goes retroactive or is it just from November forward? Their request is that it will be retroactive. So that amount includes from and okay. first. Okay, good, good. That's what I would hope. Yep. Um, article three. Uh, this is uh, an item that we've been talking about for since the third or fourth meeting. This will be uh, to transfer from available funds $3,464 to pay for cost of accessibility improvements to the S. White Dickinson Memorial Library, um, including but not limited to construction and administration services. So those are the outstanding invoices yeah. that the library trustees um, have for Jones Woodson Architects related to that project. Okay. Um, article four. See if the town will vote to raise the opening graves fee from six fifty to seven fifty. Um, yeah. So this is going to require some some research after uh, the special town meeting. I think um, it's kind of strange that the town votes <laughs> by graves opening fee under well at the annual town meeting on a warrant, and it, it's likely that it was. It was a fee that was paid to um, probably the cemetery commissioners or some other town employee. So it was setting the pay rate for a, a, a town employee or, mm -hmm. or, or someone you know that was likely elected. So it was likely a, a, a cemetery commissioner or a sexton. Um, but when the cemetery commissioners hire somebody else to do the work, it's typically not something that the town meeting would vote on. And that's just something we need to clear up with 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 town council to make sure that um, we would essentially not vote on it next year. Um, we would take it off the annual town meeting warrant, but it was voted on at this annual town meeting warrant at six fifty. So we just think we should vote. Um, we should revote it to seven fifty. Seven fifty is what they pay now for the the contractor yeah. to you know to to open the grave and do the burial. So. Um, that's a request from the cemetery commissioners to, to vote that, but yeah. it, it should turn out that it's not something that we should keep voting on unless it's going to be done internally again. So, right. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're going to look into that because this does sort of seem to be the sort of thing that they, it, it, it shouldn't involve a town meeting vote. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, Article five, that's the sum for, uh, again, we've talked about this for a couple of meetings for the additional money from the vehicle stabilization fund um, for the additional funds needed for the um, the hybrid cruiser 2023. 
every cruiser, right? Yep. Do we need, would it be useful for any clarification in there that's above the 55,000? It was. Yeah, I'll do a companion yeah. document okay. to this that has some good people might look at that and say background. Yeah. So that means, that's uh, a bargain. Great deal. It's a nice, use. that's a really good deal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a salvage. Uh, so Article 6 and Article 7 are, are of the same, uh, really for the same purpose, but slightly different. So the law allows us to set up special purpose stabilization funds. And what this does is it's an exception to the general rule that all revenue taken um, in by the town goes to the general fund. So the town can set up these uh, special purpose stabilization funds for revenue to go directly into. If we didn't have special purpose stabilization funds and we needed to put money into a separate fund, we would have to collect it as general revenue, wait for free cash to be certified, and then vote it out the following year. This allows us immediate access um, to those funds. So it's useful when the town collects certain types of revenue whose purpose is restricted. Um, so one of these cases, it, it happens to be the, the opioid uh, settlements that the town is receiving now. Uh, the town participated, um, but essentially the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and a bunch of other states sued opioid manufacturers and distributors. Um, and there was a settlement. So now the town is receiving uh, you know, settlement funds each year. And it's going to be for, I, I don't have the settlement sheet here. We've, we've seen it in the past, but it's, I think for like the next 20 or 30 years, it's the, 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 the payments are spread out and there's restricted purposes. Um, so it's not just general revenue we could spend on a new fire truck or paying, uh, you know, someone's salary. It yeah. needs to be to mitigate or abate the effects of the opioid crisis. So these funds are really useful where we separate money and we can just put it into a separate fund. Um, so what this article does is, is it creates the fund and it also dedicates the revenue from that fund. So it's really, there's really two steps happening and it's dedicating 100% of the revenue and it's gonna go directly into that fund. Stabilization fund is what the proposal is. And it will help um, I've talked with the town of Cowan about it, and um, she's in favor of doing it because it makes her job easier, and it makes the funds available immediately. And these are funds that the Board of Health will likely, you know, have some role in, in spending as well. Yeah. Um, it does take. It's not a special. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, a special revenue revolving fund, like we typically would see with like direct. Let's say the direct department where yeah. user fees go in and they go out. This uh, stabilization fund still requires a subsequent appropriation at town meeting. Um, the state has not created, has not allowed us to create an opioid, um, like a revolving fund. It's not allowed us to do that. Um, I don't know why, but uh, this is probably the best vehicle we have to deal with these at this point. Yeah, I think it's a lot cleaner. I like that. Um... So it kind of saves trouble down the road if, um, you know, if we didn't have such careful town employees, maybe sometime in the far, far future that, you know, things could get muddled. So I like this. Um, so that's Article 6. And then Article 7 seeks to do the same thing with, with, with cannabis funds um, as well. And the way that it's written right now, and I, I borrowed the language from another town, um, same idea, sets up a fund, and the way that it's written now, and we may not want to do the first part, right. um, but creates the fund, and the highlighted part talks about what revenue that the town would want to dedicate to the fund. It is really two sources. One is a local sales tax, and then one is the community impact fees. Yeah. Um, but the one thing to keep in mind, and Fred and I have had conversations about this, the local sales tax is unrestricted revenue. 
which means it can be spent uh, on any lawful municipal purpose. So it, it may not be that we want to dedicate um, right. the local tax revenue into that fund. The community impact fees, if we ever, if they're around long enough for, for us to ever get one, um, that's, you know, that's, that right. revenue was restricted to addressing the, the impacts of cannabis establishments within the town. So um, if I had a recommendation, it would just be that the town would dedicate just the community impact fees um, and not the, the excise tax. So I would, so I would, I would take out the highlighted part. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if they exact, that that's the exact cut. Uh, I would think it, that the, and further to dedicate 100% of oh, yeah, yeah. all of that part goes, and then it goes down to the community impact fees. And I wonder if it would be worth to, for clarification to establish a new cannabis impact stabilization fund. Can we have a, another word or do stabilization funds only get one adjective? Uh, you can you can call it, we can call it whatever we would like. Because I think that would, because it, it, it later people might say, oh, well, you're, you're putting this away. And we say, well, let's be really clear. It's the cannabis impact stabilization fund and that the sales tax is like the sales tax we get on anything else going into the general fund. So I would, I, it may not be important to call it that, but if adding that one word helps people down the line from being confused about, cannabis sales tax versus impact fees, then it might be worth the extra fees. Yeah. Cool. And I and I agree with you completely on the the sales tax is the sales tax that goes in the general fund, just like the sales tax on food and the sales tax, whatever else other sales tax we're allowed to collect. And I'm sure if there's one we're allowed to connect, we collect it. Yeah, you can delete whatever's in yellow there. Yeah. So that, that's Article 7, it, it's, it's yeah. the last article. Um, yeah. Including in the timing didn't work out for the Finance Committee to meet before the warrant was signed at the uh, Finance Committee meeting on the 15th. Okay. And the Finance Committee will discuss you know, the recommendations and I'll, I'll add that as an addendum to the, to okay. the warrant as to how the Finance Committee um, recommends or not recommends. Okay. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, do we need a vote on this? I imagine we do, right? Yep. And give uh, my colleagues a minute to look over things and see if there are any last minute questions. I'm How good. are you guys? You guys good? I, I move to uh, vote to approve the special town meeting warrant for November 29th, 2022, as we just reviewed it. And uh, as and amended it. And amended it. I think that is the second, Fred? Yes. <laughs> okay, moved and seconded. <laughs> Let's take a vote. Uh, I, th I can't remember who goes first this time. Julie. Uh, all in favor, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, very good. Now I have to uncover the... Uh, agenda. There we go. So we're done with old business and on to new business. First item under new business is to discuss and vote on a requested change in officers on the off-premises retail sale alcohol license for Circle K at 1 Sunderland Road, Waitley. Um, and is there someone from the Circle K here? Yes. Like chat? Oh, yes. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name, is, my name is Tyler Hensler. Uh, I'm here from Upton, Connell, and Devlin. I'm an attorney, um, and I'm here behalf, on behalf of our client, Circle K, Massachusetts, LLC. 
uh, doing business as Circle K, which is located at one Sunderland Road. Um, I, I'd like to walk you through uh, briefly a summary of what we're trying to do, if that would be helpful. Um, sure. Sure. Um, so we're here for a, a change in LLC manager. Um, a Mr. James Barris is being removed as manager of the LLC um, and is being replaced by Mr. David Saradejko. Um, and also Melissa Duncan, Kathy Cunnington, and Valerie Zamuner are being added as uh, signatories for this LLC. Um, there, there are going to be no operational changes um, and there's going to be no change in the upper tier ownership uh, of this LLC. Um, it's merely uh, uh, housekeeping, if you will, on the, the LLC level. So I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, thank you. No questions here. Spelling correction on the city slash town of Waitley, W-H-A-T-E-L-Y. Oh, uh, I'm, is that on our application? Yeah, that's it. Oh, no. I, uh, I, I did not prepare the application, oh, but if, you, if you'd like us to resubmit, I, I, I could. Well, if it needs a resubmission, then I don't worry about it. Why not the first time that's ever happened? I think yeah. you're okay. We've seen worse. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize it would require a resubmission, and that's fine. Okay. So I saw it was weekly. Weekly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I don't really have any questions related to the to the liquor license. Just to express my surprise that uh, you you have you do not look like you're old enough to be a real attorney, and I'd like your credentials <laughs> to be checked. And I'd like to see your diploma because it's just not really clear to me that you're, uh, you know, I was expecting somebody with a little more gray hairs like this <laughs> to be doing this kind of work. George, someone should tell my lower back that I, I think. Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay. Well, all right. Well, just you transfer that to your lower back. Yeah. <laughs> all right. No, I, 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 um, I don't have any, any objections or anything today. Do we need, um, yes, to, to discuss and vote. Can we ratify the request to change from Circle K in the officers of the corporation or LLC? I will second that. Okay. All of those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you for coming, Tyler. You can stick around for the town administrator <laughs> updates are not to be missed. Okay. That's the next <laughs> item. <for> the next <laughs> Thank so, you very much. Pride okay. is a big song and dance. Great. Yeah, yeah, You're that's really impressive. It, yeah. You'll want to move to Waitley for it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Have a good evening, everybody. <laughs> you too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, second under, item under new business is to discuss the tax classification options for fiscal year 23 and set the date of the tax classification public hearing. And here I have to say, I looked at the materials you sent, but I'm not sure I understood them well. So I understand there might be kind of a walkthrough of the materials coming. Um, well, I, I think- A little bit anyway. Yeah, I think we need sort of two things to decide. Um, so, the law, so this is setting the tax rate for fiscal year, uh, setting the tax classifications for fiscal year 23. Um, and it requires, um, the select board to hold a tax classification hearing. So we need to set that, we need to set that date um, for the tax classification hearing. Um, I recommended that it that it happen either on um, in just in terms of timing and approval from DLS and getting tax bills out. Um, either uh, November 21st or November 22nd. Uh, and I've given everybody a heads up as to that request. Um, yeah, I'm remembering that both of those dates were available for me. Same here. Um, with not, various, and, you know, like on, some days it could be earlier than others, but. Not good on the morning of the 21st, aside from that. But... Yeah. So I, I guess the first question is, um, do we want to hold it in the evening 
Um, it is it is a public hearing where um, folks yeah. you know, can come in and give their opinions or yeah. they could zoom in and give their opinions. So if we want to hold it um, in the evening, it may be more convenient for folks, um, yeah. but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, I can understand that. I guess I I would sympathize that this is something people might want input on. And so if we made it, our usual time is for a meeting is six o'clock. If we made it six o'clock on either the 21st or 22nd, I could certainly make either of those. Same here. Yep. yep. I, could, I could do whatever also. Okay. And given this technique, I'd probably prefer the 21st. Okay. Put that in the calendar. Yeah. Okay, well that was easy. Yeah, that's the easy part. That's the easiest part of this. The rest would be complicated. I think do the easy part first. I think you know people should just Take that advice all the time. <laughs> right. Um, dessert first. <laughs> no, dessert first? Yeah, I think it's in the same yeah. spirit. So the substance of the tax classification hearing is where it gets complicated. Um, or not complicated, depending on, on how the board wants to approach it. Um, so each year, there needs to be a tax classification uh, voted on by the select board. And it really, it really breaks out into four questions, tax, tax questions. And in, in practice, what the board is doing is it's figuring out how to disperse the tax burden across all of the, all of the taxpayers in town. Um, and there's really the state, as we as I complain a lot, really holds closely as to how the town can do that and how the town can generate revenue, but that's a whole different discussion. Uh, but there's really four questions. And um, the first one is whether the town would adopt a, a single or a uniform tax rate or a split tax rate. Uh, the second question is whether the, the, the town would um, award an open space discount, um, which really is not applicable because the town doesn't, uh, the Board of Assessors doesn't classify property as um, uh, uh, what's called a 200 classification. Um, the Board of Assessors typically deals with open space in, in taxation through 61A um, or 61B through, through chapter land process. Um, the third question is, is whether the town would adopt a residential exemption and that uh, it's essentially, it, it essentially, um, it shifts the burden um, from owner occupied homes to rentals or vacation homes. So residences that are residential property that's not the primary uh, you know the primary uh, residence of the owner uh, that Whitley doesn't have a lot of uh, rental homes or um, a lot of vacation homes so um, it's, it, when we look at it it's usually it's usually not worth it because um, it would there's really there's not a lot of rental homes to shift the burden to right. Is what we're talking about, and then the last the last question is whether the town would would grant a small commercial exemption. Um, and again, that's that's um, uh, it's an exemption. It, it's tax relief for for small commercial properties, which are, are defined as um, uh, companies that have less than ten employees and have less than a million dollars. Um, the property that they have is, is worth or assessed at less than a million dollars. Um, so those are the four questions that that the board will have to answer um, after the tax classification hearing is held. Again, there could be input. Uh, people could provide input to the board about you know those those decisions. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to add it, have a discussion tonight, is that um, I want to have the opportunity to ask the assessors for data. If, you know, what data does the board want to help make these decisions? Um, I guess is it, sort of what I'm looking for. 
at this point. Um, so that way I can I can get the board the information that it wants prior to the prior to the public hearing. Some of the information that's that that I included already was sort of a DLS handout. Um, there's the PowerPoint that um, the tax rate working group, which which uh, did sort of a deeper dive on the topic last year. Um, it had a, a PowerPoint presentation that it that it um, that it put out. Um, I think I included as an Excel spreadsheet attachment the what's called the yeah. scenario. Um, That's the one with the title options table. Options table, yes. Yeah. Yep. And that shows hypothetical that shows sort of scenarios if there was a split in the tax rate. Uh, okay. in, in the in the if there was a split tax rate, how it would affect the different classes of property. The classes of the property are residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Um, okay. As I and, mentioned before, yeah, the, the and, state controls how those are split. Typically, it's residential and open space in one classification, and then CIP, commercial, industrial, personal, and the other. Okay. And these uh, the numbers that are in here are based on last year. Right, which should be pretty similar to this year, except that there was a big spike in real estate, so it might not be exact. Uh, you know, seventy nine to twenty, well, eighty twenty split that we see here. The option? Are you talking about the options table? Yeah. Yeah, um, the options table. The numbers in there are based on last year's. Because um, you said so you, you need to get more information, so I assume that the information is like to update. Um, the values listed on the on the options table are for are for this current fiscal year. Oh, okay. So, um, in terms of other information, it was more um, we could try to look at sort of um, we could try to get into details about who might qualify for the small commercial exemption, things like that. Would oh, okay. To go back and get oh, okay. Request additional information as to parcels and, and companies and things like that okay um, so the fact that it says zero under uh residential number of eligible parcels under residential slash senior means tested exemption those are all zero because they were zero last year but they might not be zero this year um the, the senior means tested exemption i don't believe the town this town has adopted oh okay all right. And the small commercial, this again says zero for eligible parcels. That's based on last year's data. Right. Those are those are things that the, okay. So there may there may be something since then, but not as of last year. Okay. Yeah. So the numbers are are as up to date as we have, but there right. could be. There could be some eligible parcels, parcels for small commercial exemption, which is, I think, one of the four exemptions that is in that other page. Uh, yeah, the four res small commercial exemption, residential exemption, open space, and split or single. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to ask questions as we go along, so I won't forget. So I, so I guess what I'm, yeah, I guess I just want to know sort of what other information that we can gather, what I can gather for the board and what I can gather from the board of assessors that, that you would want to, what you would, that the board would want to see. Um, this, this, what if scenario works, the options table here is, is just, uh, a spreadsheet that's that the DLS runs. You just essentially type in your tax levy and you type in uh you know the, I'm not sharing my screen so that nobody can see it. <laughs> um so you that's type not the tax levy and what level of yeah reduction yeah. work yeah. I can see it but nobody else can right. well I, as I'm looking through the meeting materials there's the PowerPoint presentation from 
the previous year, which was fiscal 22, but the hearing was held in December 21. And that I gave um, uh, information about open space discount. It gave information about residential exemption, which may, you know, just that information might be updated. Uh, the small commercial exemption had some more detailed information, but presumably that's last year's because it's last year's PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, and then next steps. So I would think the very least to update those numbers that are associated with the different options to see um, what happened. And I guess also to kind of, to me, one of the things, like I was on the fence last year about trying to do a split rate. And I think there was somewhere, and I'm not finding it right away. Oh, here it is. Um, the split tax rate, um, there's a table on one of these. The practical application of a split tax rate based on, uh, sorry, rate based on CIP property valuation. They gave an example of, of if there's a 20% shift uh, and what's the difference between uh, zero and 20% shift. I thought that was actually really relevant, um, especially that particular information. Okay. Yeah, and looking over all of the materials, I found the PowerPoint presentation, since it was really synopsized and it's still much easier to understand and make decisions about. So if that could, as Joyce, Joyce suggested, be updated, that would be awesome. Yep. What about so the other the other one that I think that is sort of not decided for for Waitley is a small commercial exemption. The other two are are, are yeah. not real options in terms of how properties assessed, but will be a small commercial exemption. As in, do we want to allow it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which is actually a very limited exception to give them a number of employees and dying property. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, yeah, that would. So I there think aren't that, that many businesses that will qualify and count under both. Right. So oh, it did not seem like it. Yeah, it seemed like. Uh, well, the conclusion last maybe year was. They may not qualify under the amount of business, but they've got more than 10 employees. So they would be out as a. By the okay. Business. Well, that's interesting, Brian. I, I, I misunderstood. Oh, I, I didn't hear it. But I, I just took Waitley as, as an example. They might qualify under the dollar value for, of their property, recess oh. value, but they like they have more than ten employees, so would not qualify. Yeah, well, a lot of the business, a lot of the, a lot of the, the smaller companies yeah. in, in town are. are our home-based businesses, right. um, and and they and they and they would follow, but, yeah, yeah. but but there are businesses that you would think of as a small business that if they got more than ten employees would not fall. Oh, okay. Brian had given me a little tutorial the other day, okay. and yeah. this is all new to me, and it looked like there were a fair number of businesses. Oh, there there will be a fair number okay. that right. are, are very small businesses, but there there are businesses that. One would hope might qualify the duck. Right. And we can't we don't have the power to change the 10 employees or less to 20 employees or less. That's the purview of the state to tell us exactly what they want us to do. And so we can't do anything creative like make it 15 or 20 instead of 10. Right. I don't know if you gave Julie this, which I this is a report of the committee from a couple of years ago. Or from last year, if I get you, which is yeah, yeah, a lot of good that, that I had. Uh, yeah, that's what I I know. So. Okay, she got that. The pros and cons. Of, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then it sounds like I I should ask the assessors for the data. Yeah. Small yes, please. Exemption as well. Yeah. Okay. And I um. So that's, I mean, that's what I was. Um, yeah, it, I think. What's direction on how to. Can we ask the data on which companies would be affected in which way? 
We can try it. We, we can try it. We, we have problems that. getting all the employee information right. last yeah. year. Yeah. <clears throat> and it is a it is an application basis. The exemption is is a right, is something right, that right. needs to be applied for. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so, so they'll do their best to figure out who would qualify, but the actual determination of whether they qualify is by application. So it's an estimate, really. Right. They, they, the, the companies would be any commercial, industrial, and personal property would, would be taxed at the higher rate if it was commercial. It would be on the, the owner of the property to apply for the exemption to reduce uh, their tax Okay. That's if it's split. Um, it, it is still possible to do a uniform to do a uniform rate or a single rate and do the small commercial exemption if if you know it, it's not necessarily <coughs> not exclusive. It could be any combination of the of, of the two. Mm -hmm. So okay. I will gather that data um, and send it out. I will make requests to gather that data and gather the, the data that I can and send it out. Okay. Well, in advance of the, the tax classification hearing, which which we will set for November twenty first at six p.m. Okay. All right. Great. Now I know we're about to go on to town administrator updates, but as I'm looking at this, is Hannah here for some town administrator updates, or are we allowed to just give her some? I love see Hannah for, for the recent. You know, give her some love for the recent uh, accomplishments. And here we go. Uh, we we'll have some clappy hands, um, some thumbs up. Some Thank you. The hearts in a completely appropriate way. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And here's some party favors. Yay! Yeah. That's my big announcement. Not to. Uh, oh, okay, is that going to be part of town administrator updates? Yes. Okay. Then I turn it over to Brian for town administrator updates. Oh, we'll let we'll let Hannah go first. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Um, so as Joyce so wonderfully mentioned, we have four recent grant awards that I'm excited to announce. Um, two are through One Stop for Growth. We got $59,000 for the Exit 35 planning study and $58,950 for the Egypt Road water main loop connection. Um, we also received two Community Compact Best Practices grant um, 7,500 for a personnel policy update and 25,000 for the phase one of our master planning effort with FERCOG. All right. Hey, go Whaley. Yes. Well, go Hannah. I know it's a team effort over there, but I know you're in the driver's seat for a lot of that. So, and, you know, oh, writing grants, you know, checking all the details and really making sure the application is what the applicant reviewers want to see is really important and so thank you for that thanks yeah happy to do it uh question do we have do we know yet what for like a veteran or lead agencies would be assume the personnel committee will be working on the personnel issue do we have a master plan <laughs> committee or yeah so um we just received that notification this week, so um, we haven't begun the contracting yet, which means that we haven't begun putting much work towards uh, the beginning steps of taking those projects underway. But um, I imagine that the personnel committee will be involved with the contractor who's doing the personnel policy review, and FERCOG will help us assemble a master planning committee. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Want to, Hannah, do you want to just give an update on the meta? On the meta yes. <clears throat> yeah, so that's uh, the next grant that's on the to-do list. Um, that's short for Municipal Energy Technical Assistance. Um, we just received a response from John Tortolot, who said that he would be willing to provide us a scope of work. Uh, the due date is coming up relatively quickly. It's on the 18th. We're hoping that he will be able to produce, produce a scope of work before then so that we can turn it in. Um, and just as a reminder, that's for the fleet assessment for transitioning over to electric vehicles. Um, so as long as everything goes according to plan and we receive all of the materials that we need to receive before the due date, we will be turning that in on the 18th. Cool. 
right? Um, I guess it's my turn. Uh, water merger project update. The water merger has um, essentially been completed. Um, at least the physical connection has been completed and it was turned on on October 31st. Um, I understand that there was that there were very little issues when that when that happened. Um, so things that are left to do there um, that will require, I, I guess, town town input is that I believe that the town will have to file special legislation, and this has already been approved at an annual town meeting. Um, when the water district is ready to uh, to go away, we'll have to file the special legislation um, to dissolve the water district um, to end its uh, end its existence. I guess um, it's created yeah. act of special legislation by the town, so it takes one to uh, to dissolve the district. The district is going to wind up its affairs. Um, behind the scenes, and the plan was the dis the district will have to do what it's doing with the wood as well, um, and uh, also with some of the property that it has, um, it will have to, um, you know, wrap up its affairs. Um, it, from the from the water department side, I believe there needs to be meter upgrades that are made um, to the to the the new houses, so that will take place. Um, Probably over the next couple of months, uh, a meter, I should say, meter, uh, the meter heads. We're getting too specific here, but there needs to be something done to the meters to make them easily read by the water department. Uh, but that was a uh, project long in the planning that has that has been finished. So um, I think that's the, the really good job by, by Wayne and uh, the water commissioners. Um, Havenville Road reconstruction project. Um, that's still moving forward. I've had um, actually had a conversation with um, uh, uh, representatives from the city of Northampton an hour and a half ago, I think. Um, so um, that's still moving forward. We're going to set up a, a future meeting to, to talk about our, our ask for Northampton um, in terms of Article 97, um, the easements that will be needed uh, for the project. Um, I guess whether we like it or not, winter's coming. Um, Ethan and I uh, met and just sort of discussed uh, winter maintenance at town buildings and the sidewalks. Um, our plan is uh, will be to continue with the the contractor that we have um, that we've used in the past for the town buildings and the sidewalks. Um, that one of them was JDR Builders, and the other one was, was John Hannum, who does the sidewalks. Um, it doesn't require uh, it doesn't require a, a bid process because it's under the threshold. I think we spent about um, three thousand. I think Keith spent around three thousand dollars in sidewalk clearing. I had a sticky note here somewhere, but it's it's gone, and I think it was around forty six hundred for, for for town building. Um, you know, just shoveling and, and treating the the town buildings. Um, and then it also reminds me that at the next meeting, the select board needs to vote the winter parking restrictions, which which prohibits parking in town lots overnight um, from like December until April. Um, Center School RFP is out. Um, okay. We have requested bids to come, uh, uh, proposals to come back on Jan by January 30th. Um, and also the Hurley Park uh restroom work is also out to bid again i was trying to but i forget which date it is due um but it's due sometime within the next two weeks so um it's listed on the website i started to look for it but i couldn't find it quickly okay. um this let's see what else do i have here um that is about all that i have Okay. All right. Great. Well, that um, looks like the, our agenda. Are there any items not anticipated? Okay. I'm not seeing any. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. 
All right. All those in favor? Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.